This is KGW News at 5. Hello, friends, and welcome to KGW News at 5 o'clock on this Monday. Cities and counties across Oregon are rethinking budget plans after getting their own version of a stimulus check. The federal relief package passed by Congress last week will pump millions of dollars into local government across the state. And it comes at a crucial moment. Here's Kyle Iboshi. After months of bad news about budget cuts and businesses closing, the city of Portland got some much needed positive news. The massive federal relief package passed by Congress and signed by the president last week is expected to send $217 million directly to Portland. The legislation directs a fire hose of money to cities and counties throughout the state. It won't make any difference whether you're 2,500 or uh, 250,000 in population. You're going to get a direct check um, to help out with uh, coming through this pandemic. Multnomah County is in line to receive more than 157 million in pandemic relief funds. Our work has, has I would say, doubled, tripled, quadrupled over the past year. Multnomah County Chair Deborah Kafori said the money comes at a critical time when people need help with food and housing. It'll also help the county pay for coronavirus expenses, including vaccines, testing, and contact tracing. We're not out of the woods yet by any means, and this is a really crucial time as we're um, fighting to get as many people vaccinated as possible while the new variants that we're hearing about are, are coming about. For smaller communities like Seaside, which is expected to receive $1.4 million, Mayor Jay Barber says the money is a positive sign of a turnaround. Having these funds come in uh, to invest in the infrastructure is a way of saying maybe we are going to get the, to the other side of this. Cities and counties will begin receiving their funds this spring and early summer, but only half the money. The other half will come next year. Local leaders say the timing couldn't be better. They're planning budgets now for the next fiscal year, and the federal funds will help fill budget gaps. Kyle Aboshi, KGW News. The Oregon Health Authority reports more than 1.3 million COVID vaccine shots have been given in Oregon. Some are second doses. Today we take a look at how vaccinations are going on some of Oregon's Native American reservations. Here's Pat Doris. In Southern Oregon, pictures from recent vaccination events show the Klamath tribes in action. It's actually been a, um, a very amazing um, program that we've been able to put together. Misty Wadzek is the tribal health nurse supervisor. She's in Arkansas on a family emergency, but paused to talk about the effort. Do you feel like your your tribe is getting the attention that it deserves in terms of the COVID vaccine? Yeah, absolutely. We've actually, um, in Klamath County, we've actually been able to reach out and support the vaccination effort in Klamath County um, and kind of lead the effort with vaccination in some ways in that area. She said there is enough vaccine to offer it to any tribal member who's 18 or older and all of their contacts. So far, that's meant shots to 2,900 people, just under half tribal members. She's getting the vaccine from the state and said it's going well. Was it painful? No, I couldn't even feel it. To the east, the Umatilla tribe has vaccinated more than 2,000 people. 55% are members or people who belong to other tribes. Historically, um, our Indian communities had difficulty um, um, trusting um, health, health systems. Lisa Guzman is CEO of Yellowhawk Tribal Health. She said there is also enough vaccine here for everyone, but some are hesitant. We have tribal membership who had once declined now stepping in and saying, I, I want the vaccination. I think it was just a matter of education. The Umatilla tribes are getting the vaccine directly from the federal government. A super cold storage freezer used for lamprey research now holds Pfizer vaccine. There is enough to offer it to athletes at five school districts near the reservation. 60 miles southwest of Portland, the Grand Ronde have given out the majority of shots in Oregon on tribal land, 9,000 and counting more than half to members. Kelly Rowe is the executive director of the health services. We've always wanted to be able to spread wider than just to our membership and to our clinic patients. And so they are holding mass vaccination events open to the general public. You can sign up on their Facebook page. As with the other tribes, the Grand Ronde are educating members, showing them the vaccine is safe and hoping more will get their shots soon. But at the same time, they're protecting the tribal members by protecting the community around them following the wise teaching of tribal elders. 
um, when this tribe was restored um, in the 80s was very clear that when the tribe was terminated, the community took care of the tribe, and so the tribe will take care of the community. And, and we, we push that forward and it becomes part of our mission. The fourth tribe that responded is the Coquel down in the Coos Bay area. They have about 1,100 members and say that in the five county area surrounding where they live, they vaccinated about 80% of their elders there. They've also come to Portland to vaccinate members here. In Northeast Portland, Pat Doris, KGW News. Most people who are getting vaccinated have gotten both doses and gotten their second shot on time. A new CDC report looked at vaccination data between December and late February. Nationwide, only 3.4% of people who got their first shot did not get a second dose inside the recommended time window. In Oregon, that percentage is even better. Only about 1.6% missed their second dose. Washington was near the national average, with about 3.2% of people missing a second dose. We get dozens of questions every day about the vaccine, and we want you to be able to turn to us for answers. On Wednesday, our Pat Doris and Kristen Severance will be answering your questions in a special KGW Q&A, the vaccine, scheduling, and beyond. They've been covering all aspects of the vaccine since it was first approved. They'll share their expertise and knowledge and take your questions. That's Wednesday at noon on KGW.com and on our Facebook page. It has been a year since students in Portland Public Schools have learned inside a classroom. After Governor Brown's executive order to reopen schools, the district and the teachers union have agreed to bring kids back. An official vote is coming later this week, but here is the tentative timeline. April 1st, preschool and first graders will go back for in-person hybrid. April 5th will be second through fifth graders and April 19th for sixth through 12th graders. This meets the governor's executive order and affects around 50,000 students. Families will have a choice to keep students in distance learning. PPS told us it increased ventilation and bought air filtration systems to make classrooms safer. It also hired more social workers to help students as they transition back and is working on hiring more custodians. But beyond you, a teacher and parent is among those who don't think the district or its buildings are ready to reopen. Um, you can't just put a Band-Aid on it and say it's good to go. These are systemic issues in our buildings in PPS. Um, our schools are underfunded. That's why I'm really keying in on the needing more custodians, needing more counselors, and needing more nurses. Um, because if those things are addressed, then teachers aren't worrying about the safety pieces as much, and they can focus more on the academics. Meantime, Oregon lawmakers are considering a summer learning and child care package, a $250 million plan announced last week. It would fund summer enrichment and academic programs for kindergarten through eighth grade. Oregon State President F. King Alexander could face consequences here for his handling of sexual misconduct complaints while he worked at Louisiana State University. The controversy centers around complaints that LSU football coach Les Miles acted inappropriately toward female students. According to USA Today, LSU's athletic director urged Alexander to fire Miles in 2013. Miles stayed at the school until 2016. A report also found the university didn't properly report claims of sexual assault by students. Last week, Alexander apologized. Oregon State trustees will hold a public meeting on Wednesday before considering discipline for Alexander, which could include dismissal. The ACLU of Oregon and other civil rights groups are calling for a federal investigation into the Portland Police Bureau. It's over a tactic called kettling that officers used on a crowd in the Pearl District Friday night. Some people started smashing businesses' windows. Portland police then corralled about 100 people near Northwest 13th and Marshall. Officers took photos and names. They found people with loaded guns, smoke bombs, a dagger, slingshot, hammer, and spray paint. Video from the roundup shows they also forced journalists out of the perimeter. They demanded my full name and my birth date, which they wrote on a piece of duct tape and then gave it to me to put on my chest. I was advised that if I returned to the protest, they would arrest me. Police kept the crowd there for hours, saying they were investigating destruction of property. 
Police used this tactic during protests back in 2017, and it prompted two civil lawsuits, which the Oregonian reports were tossed out earlier this year.